Hello everybody and welcome back to New Egg TV. I'm Steve and today we have a very special guest in our studio. This is Jesse from NVIDIA. He's actually the project manager in charge of Embedded. Is that right, Jesse? That's correct. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty uh, fancy title there. It makes me wonder what you actually brought into our studio. So what is this that you brought? So this is called the Jetson TK1. Mm -hmm. It's a mobile supercomputer for Embedded. Very what it is, is it's a developer kit based on NVIDIA's latest Tegra K1 processor. It's our newest system on a chip, hmm. has over 190, has 192 CUDA cores, over 300 gigaflops of performance. Wow, that's a lot of power in such a small size. So basically this is a dev board then. So that's right. So, that's what right. Would, so what would this then be ideally for? I'm, I'm assuming do-it-yourselfers, but there's got to be more. Yeah, so anything that lends itself to parallel processing, mm. tasks like computer vision, image processing, this is going to be great for. So you can imagine you're building a robot. Mm -hmm. You want that robot to be able to see and map and, and interact with its environment. You could, use a, you could use a board like this to give it that computer vision. Oh, that's fantastic. So I actually, uh, off camera, we had a quick discussion about robotics. Uh, you had gone to first robotics championship, if that's memory correct. serves. So, so can you tell everybody else what specifically happened? I thought that was interesting. Yeah, so the first robotics championship, first of all, the first organization it's this amazing organization. What they do is they work with kids uh, and have them work on teams, learning teamwork, cooperation, how to compete in a healthy way, and this is all around robotics competitions. So these kids wow. from elementary school all the way up to high school are building robots, um, going to these events to compete. Now this competition that I went to was nationals, so you had these amazing teams from all over the world. Wow. We were there talking a little bit about Jetson TK1, and the kids that talked to us they totally got it. They're really? really excited about this. They understood what it could do for them, um, and this would be a great board for them to use in their robots. So fascinating. So great for robotics. Now, what if you were going to make something other than just like some kind of a competition, maybe a mm -hmm. robot for disaster relief? Absolutely. So you think of Fukushima. Mm -hmm. um, the Fukushima tragedy, uh, it's been a huge challenge to clean up, and the reason why is that the environment is still so toxic that humans can't go inside. It's also a very complex and in some cases dynamic environment and robots can't navigate it easier either. What's needed is a robot that has the computer vision and the higher level functioning to be able to navigate those complex dynamic environments for disaster situations like that one. And just operate autonomously, right? Exactly. Without any interaction with us. So fascinating. All right, so that aside, can we crack open this box and take a look at what's inside? You bet, let's take a look. Okay, Jesse, so if you don't mind, I'm, I'm just gonna start throwing stuff into the camera. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, first off, it looks like we have a little bit of, uh, a, little bit of a, a paperwork option here that's not, not bad, actually. Kind of a thicker cardboard stock. A uh, bit of information here, what is this? Login credentials, is it, is it already got Ubuntu already installed? That's right, so it's pre-installed with uh, Linux for Tegra. It's wow. based on Ubuntu 14.04. Nice. Um, when just you came get out. this, yeah, it just came out. You get your board, take it out of the box, plug it in, it'll boot to a command line. You have to run one installation script, uh, and then you'll be able to boot to a desktop. That's fantastic. All right, I noticed we also have a mini USB to standard USB cable here. Obviously, you're gonna need that as well. Yeah, so that's for flashing if you wanna reflash your board. Oh, okay, perfect. And then, of course, we have the AC brick. Sorry, I just grabbed it and threw it out there. I didn't realize you were gonna say something else about the USB cable. Yeah, no problem. And then, finally, on to the meat and potatoes of this interview, we have what is in the background currently running, but in the foreground, we have this beautiful uh, Jetson TK1 board. So, wow, this is very this is very tiny, like the, the other boards that I have seen. But more importantly, this seems to have a lot more going on. Uh, Jesse, actually, do you want to take the reins on this? Absolutely. So, um, like you said, small form factor, a lot of processing power. Tegra K1 processor, 192 CUDA cores, over 300 gigaflops of performance. Uh, onboard storage, 16 gigabytes. Also has 2 gigabytes of RAM. Other storage options, you have SATA 2. Uh, and then an SD card. Nice. I want to take a look at some of the I.O. on the end here. So this go. is RS-232 for uh, serial console, HDMI to plug into your display, uh, USB 3, gigabit Ethernet, uh, microphone in, headphone out, and then over here is a USB 2 port. Now this is the port that you would use to do your flashing, but it can also function as a host port, so you can use it as, as an additional USB expansion port with an adapter. Something we spoke about earlier too, guys, he, he didn't make a mistake, that actually is the microphone. It's just Foxconn had a lot of these nice uh, dual 3.5 millimeter 
uh, plugs, and they decided to go with blue and green, which honestly, it's NVIDIA, so they can do anything they want anyways. It's NVIDIA colors. <laughs> Let's spin around here. I also noticed, uh, I wanted to say that was an M dot or an MSATA port. Uh, is that correct? No, this is actually a mini, half mini PCIe by one, so you Perfect. could use this for adding more expansion, uh, maybe another gigabit Ethernet, a wireless. Uh, or GPS. So way better than another storage option completely. Absolutely. Uh, four pin Molex obviously to go along with the uh, SATA. And then if I spin it around here, it looks like we have two more uh, ports, one for the power. That's right. So this is uh, 12 volts DC in. Oh, nice. And how power efficient is the K1? Well, so the Tegra K1 is the most efficient SOC architecture that NVIDIA has ever built. Uh, running under interesting workloads, just the chip itself can run in the five to six watt range. Wow. Uh, now the entire board, there's uh, many more components on here and there's also room for expansion. It can run 10, 15 watts or even higher depending on what you have plugged in. But the chip itself, five to six uh, watts under normal load. Uh, and then in idle, the power draw is measured in the hundreds of milliwatts. That's so fantastic. So clearly, depending on what shields you end up connecting to this system, and whatever you end up connecting to it on top of that would clearly need more or less energy, or voltage, I should say. So then moving along, with that looks like it's probably an SD card slot, right? That's correct, For SD. For expandable. Do you know how, how big I can, how, what size SD card I can put in there? Yeah, so the theoretical limit that uh, I've read is two terabytes. Um, we haven't actually tested that. Of I don't course. have a two terabyte SD card, but 64 seems to work fine. Excellent, okay, and I'm gonna spin it back around again, bring it up uh, upside down. Uh, what, what, which one is this? Is this for uh, J, JTAG? Yeah, this is JTAG. So this is for low-level hardware de uh, debugging. If you go to NVIDIA's developer site for this board, developer.nvidia.com slash Jetson dash TK1, uh, you can find out more information about compatibility of this with other off-the-shelf JTAG solutions. Excellent. Uh, and this, this looks pretty familiar, and anybody out there who already has Arduino base boards might be familiar with it. Uh, but clearly, what kind of connectivity are we going to have here? So this is where you get all your additional expansion for uh, signals that are not exposed on the board itself. There's GPIOs, I squared C, there are two CSI buses for camera connectivity, SPI, and DisplayPort and LVDS. Oh, fantastic. So uh, let's just say I already have some Arduino-based uh, shields. Are, are there going to be some kind of adapter maybe I can purchase that will be able to use that? Yeah, so the voltage levels are actually different on this expansion header than you might have on your Ardu Arduino shield, uh, but there's going to be a lot of interest in doing exactly what you said, so I'd say uh, stay tuned okay. um, for, for uh, an adapter board either developed by NVIDIA or somebody else um, to do exactly that. that would be a smart man, whoever does that. Uh, and then this looks like some kind of a, a header port here for connectivity for buttons and reset switches and such? Uh, actually, this here is a uh, display touch header, oh my so God. if you want to connect a touch screen, um, oh. This is how you would get access to that. That's fantastic. Now, I'm not sure if we missed anything else, but I'm just going to flip it around to the back so everybody else can kind of see uh, the different controllers that they might have uh, installed here and get a good look at the whole PCB front and back. And last but not least, I see three small buttons here, some surface-mounted buttons. And what are these, Jesse? That's right. So that's your power switch, your recovery switch, uh, and your reset switch. Now, when you plug the board on, it's going to power on automatically. Uh, but if you need to reset or you need to reset the power, this is the way that you do it. Obviously, if you want to reflash your board, you're going to have to be in recovery mode. That's the button that you use to get there. Oh, fantastic information. So this is a really solid board, Jesse. Now, I'm curious, how does this compare to maybe a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino-based system? Yeah, they're really for two different types of users. Uh, Arduino and Raspberry Pi, they're great systems for tinkering. People have done a lot of really cool, innovative things on those boards. The Jetson TK1 is for somebody who needs serious computational performance. I mentioned it's over 300 gigaflops. It's going to really excel at things that require a lot of parallel processing, like computer vision, uh, like image processing. The Jetson TK1 is for those types of users. That's awesome. So I see actually we have a, a if you haven't already noticed guys, we have a running system behind it, another Jetson TK1 that we've had plugged in and it's actually running our background right now on the left computer. That is an Ubuntu desktop and you did say it was 14.04, right? Yeah, it's Linux for, Linux for Tegra. It's based on Ubuntu 14.04. Uh, it has some additional uh, Tegra specific NVIDIA uh, goodness in it. Can we dive into a demo with this? Absolutely. Okay. All right, so I have a couple demos that I'm going to show you. Um, now, the thing to keep in mind is that te the Tegra K1 uses the Kepler GPU core, and so it can run all of the same applications um, that you would run on a desktop system or on a supercomputer. Let's start with the first one. Oh, wow. So this is a really cool wave simulation. 
what you're seeing here is these waves are all being simulated in real time. Um, so I can move around a little bit, show you different views. It's got tessellation running the That's whole time, right. right? It's got tessellation running, like you said, for the, uh, the real fine graphical detail on the waves. And the uh, wave simulation and the graphics are both running in parallel on the GPU. Um, the CPU is just kind of hanging out right now. Hmm. This is something that you wouldn't be able to do on most mobile processors. Uh, because we have an OpenGL 4.4 capable GPU, we get to enjoy all this goodness. No, it's really impressive. This is one of our classic CUDA demos. So I mentioned that this GPU supports CUDA 6. This is called N-Body, and this is a mass simulation. Mm -hmm. uh, 8,192 bodies uh, are all interacting with one another. Uh, like I said, this is running on CUDA, something that's not capable, uh, that's not possible on, on most mobile GPUs. Running about 60 frames a second, single precision? That's right. Again, the graphics and the compute are running in parallel on the GPU. Yeah, the thing that's really important here is you can run all that functionality. You can have a lot of parallel performance, but the thermal envelope and the, the power draw required to do that on this platform are really small. Right. It allows you to start bringing some applications to robotics, to portable medical devices, um, to portable defense and security applications. Jesse, that was really fascinating, and I just have a quick question. Let's say I have another system at my house and I want to compare it to. I noticed in the past that typically demos are, are held on, on NVIDIA's website. Mm -hmm. uh, can we get those same uh, scripts to run on someone else's Ubuntu system? Absolutely. So if you go to uh, developer.nvidia.com slash jetson-tk1, um, and that URL is in the quick start guide as well. You can download uh, all of our demos. That's also where you can get software updates, uh, tool chains, um, uh, and all of the board documentation that you might need, uh, like to print a 3D case, uh, nice. or to build your own board that's compatible with the Jetson TK1. So really, NVIDIA is trying to take a developer community and almost just build their own community around the Jetson. Is that the case? Yeah, I mean, a, a community-based board like this, it only survives uh, if there's enough documentation to allow the community to develop. Um, that's going to be NVIDIA's job, to put that documentation out there, uh, to nourish a community, and to really build something amazing. Well, that's fantastic. You know, we're also going to put that link in the description below, so if you guys didn't catch that, don't worry about it. We'll have the link there for you. And Jesse, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us about this. This is exciting new stuff, and I can't wait to see what people end up doing with it. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, we're really excited, too. We think this is a fantastic dev kit, and we hope people just blow us away. That's so cool. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Newegg TV for videos like these and our other YouTube channels. Channels. Otherwise, we'll see you guys very soon.